Today, we're going to be talking about Fuji. Hey, what's going on? It's Ryan, and uh, we are going to be talking about actually something a little different today. Generally, I talk about film on the channel, but uh, since because of everything that's been going on, I've actually put a little bit of a break on film for right now. I still do shoot it. I'm looking at some different developing studios, but the studio that I go to to get my film developed is temporarily uh, taking a break and they just are so overwhelmed. So I've been looking into other ways of getting photography out there. So I've been shooting a couple of things on my Canon EOS R mirrorless camera. I actually shot this video of us going to Sleepy Hollow on my Canon digital camera and not film because I wanted to make sure I was able to make a video and have photos associated with it. So today we're gonna be talking about another camera that I recently just picked up, but I'm not gonna be keeping it. And there's a couple of reasons behind it, but we're gonna go over it first before anything. And that camera is the Fuji X100V camera. Now this is a mirrorless camera. It is a 26 megapixel camera. And I'll tell you, I love the thing. I really, really love this thing, but it's $1,500 with tax. And that is a lot of money for a camera that is just kind of a companion camera. Let's go over a couple things about this camera first that I really do like, and then the things I don't. First, let's go over the biggest thing, the form factor. Look how small this thing is. It's super small. It could fit in my pocket perfectly. It fits in this jacket pocket perfectly. And I'm able to just put it in there, go about my day and just shoot things as I see it. It is a fantastic street photography camera. It's super portable, super sleek. It's sexy, it's beautiful and I love it for those reasons. The second reason, getting back to that street style photography camera, is the lens on this. The lens is a 23 millimeter aspherical lens. So basically what that equates to, since this is a crop sensor, it's basically a 35 millimeter lens on any sort of regular camera. So this is the perfect lens and perfect focal point for street photography. It's wide, but it's tight and it's perfect for those scenes. The aperture goes from F16 all the way down to F2. And at F2, you get some pretty impressive bokeh. When you focus in on something, you get that beautiful background bokeh that everybody loves and it just looks fantastic. And then when you have it open, say at like F8 or F11, you get nice, fully, all around sharp photos. Next is something that's not really on the camera, but something that's internal, is the color profiles that are built into this camera. The one I love the most was the classic negative for the Fuji camera. Basically, this replicates a very vintage, classic 35 millimeter negative sort of look. Little washed out, little hints of greens and blues and yellows, and it just looks like it was made with a 35 millimeter film stock. really made me feel like I was shooting with a 35 millimeter camera with instant results. Next is this variable screen on the back. 
This is a touch screen that actually pops out and lets you shoot from the hip, or if you need to, shoot from high up. It's a little thing that they put on here that just really works perfectly for it because even though you're gonna be using this at eye level most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to shoot from the hips sometimes and this camera lets you do that. Speaking of shooting from the eye, this has both an optical viewfinder and then with this flip of the switch over here, an electronic viewfinder. Now we all know I love electronic viewfinders. They have it on my EOS R, they have it on here. It's just fantastic for those mirrorless cameras and it lets you see exactly what your sensor is seeing all the way down to the color profile that you put into this camera. Now a couple of things I don't like that are actually making me not stick with this camera. The megapixel count. I know. I'm pixel peeping, I'm being annoying about this, I get it. But when you compare a photo from this camera compared to my EOS R, 26 megapixels versus 31, you can really notice the difference. I noticed it, things were a little bit soft, things weren't as super sharp as I liked them. But I get it, this is not meant to be a professional camera. This is meant to be like a run and gun. Let me just take out with me on today's walk or on my trip just to have with and not have to worry about this big DSLR or mirrorless camera on my arm and just ugly and obtrusive. But for someone who cares about clarity and sharpness, I know even though I shoot film, I still like my Canon EOS R photos over this. is just price. I mean, my Canon EOS R, yes, I've had it for a little while. I've built up a lens system for it and everything, but this, this retails at $13.99. That is an expensive camera just for running and gunning, but I just thought it was too expensive and it wasn't proving the good results. And again, I already have a camera and I have 35 millimeter cameras, film cameras that I can't wait to start using again once things get a little bit better. But for me, the price was just a little too much. If it was under $1,000, I would keep this thing. But the price range that it was put at, I just really can't get behind. So that's why I'm gonna be taking this back to B&H and giving it back to them. I do love this camera, but it's just not right for what I look for, what I use cameras for, and what I'm looking for, and for my budget. So for that, I'm gonna be returning this, but that doesn't mean that there aren't people out there that this is good for. It's just not good for me, and I'm gonna be returning it. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.